The views and opinions expressed here on Wrestling Wind Down are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of any other agency, organization, employer, or company. What's up, guys? It's Lo, and you are tuned in to Wrestling Wind Down, a female founded and hosted podcast dedicated to professional wrestling and our favorite adult beverage. We are back with another installment of our series, The Life of a Wrestling Fan, where we chat with amazing individuals individuals with awesome careers who also happen to be professional wrestling fans. I am so honored to be joined by Marge Santoromana. By day, you can find her making some amazing cakes as a cake decorator. And by night, she is a wrestling merchandise creator, as well as a wrestling cosplayer. Marge is spilling the wine on her love of professional wrestling and what has kept her interested for so many years. She is also sharing how she got into the cake decorating field, including her educational background, some of the amazing cakes she's had the honor of making, including a WWE Raw 25th anniversary cake, as well as some of her more difficult cakes that she's been able to create. Marge is also setting the record straight on one of her first cakes that seemed to be making the rounds on the internet as a meme. As I mentioned earlier, Marge is also an amazing cosplayer, and she is spilling the wine on how she finds inspiration to create cosplays and some of her favorite pieces that she's put together so far. And finally, Marge is telling us all about how she got into making wrestling merchandise and pins. Marge was one of the first women to get involved in the pin making business and has had a lot of success. We'll be chatting about her inspirations behind creating pieces both past and present and where you can find Marge at next to cop some merchandise. So grab your favorite glass of bubbly. We're going in for the three count. Welcome back to another episode of Wrestling Wind Down. We are here with another episode of our series, The Life of a Wrestling Fan. I love this series because we are able to spotlight amazing individuals who have amazing careers, but also happen to be professional wrestling fans. I am so honored to be joined by this lady. I have been keeping up with her for years now. You've probably seen some of her cake designs. You've probably seen some of her merch. Marge Santa Romana, welcome to Wrestling Wind Down. How are you? Good. How are you? Thanks for I'm having me. Good. Long time coming. I've wanted you yeah. on the show since I've started pretty much. I and I'm know. like, I need her on here. <laughs> Let's dive right in. When did you become a professional wrestling fan? I want to say probably middle school, like probably around like 10 or 11. I just remember watching like Chris Jericho on WCW. And that's when I fell in love with wrestling and Chris Jericho. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure he's what got me into wrestling. <laughs> What has kept you interested for so long in the sport? I know a lot of people, they fall out when they get to like middle school, high school, but what has kept you interested? The big meaty men slapping me, obviously. Um, (laughs) I did honestly fall off for a little bit, like maybe like after high school, because my parents like always were like, oh, this is a phase. You're not going to like wrestling forever. So they kind of like bullied me into not wanting to like wrestling anymore like they threw out some of my toys and then I felt the need to like I know my mom threw away my life-size Chris Jericho cardboard stand-up and like I'm scarred for life yeah so I'm scarred to this day um and then like I felt the need oh I guess I gotta grow out of this so I ended up you know giving away and throwing out a lot of my wrestling stuff and then yeah you know later in life I'm like like what I like wrestling. Like, why would, why would I want to <laughs> give it up? And so I, like, got back into it maybe, like, in college. Mm-hmm. I had that same thing happen, actually. I fell out as well, and I was just thinking about it the other day. I had so many WWE magazines, and I threw them all away because I thought I wasn't going to like wrestling anymore. And you look back now, and people have these amazing, like, pristine copies of the WWE magazine. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that could have been me. It's like this big thing about how, like, you know, it's for kids and, you Mm -hmm. know, something you'll grow out of. And I feel like that pressure got to me. And um, yeah, I tried to grow out of it and it didn't work. Who were some of your favorite superstars to watch growing up? Chris Jericho, obviously, but who else? And then versus now, who do you enjoy watching? Well, let me see. My favorite tag team of all time were the Hardy Boys. And um, Lita was also my favorite female wrestler of all time. 
But now I really love Asuka, EO Sky, love Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley. My favorite tag team right now is the Acclaimed. Orange Cassidy. I love all of them, but especially Joshi wrestlers. They're my fave. Do you keep up with any independent wrestling? I am from New York City, so I would regularly go to Evolve, Beyond, GCW shows. I don't have that luxury anymore, unfortunately, because I moved to Virginia. So I feel like I really took the wrestling scene in New York for granted. I don't see much live wrestling these days. We got to get them out to Virginia so you can watch some indie wrestling. I know. (laughs) Along with being a professional wrestling fan, you are a cake decorator and a cosplayer. Let's start with the cake decorating. How did your career begin in this field? I really got into cake decorating because I started watching shows like Cake Boss and like cake competition shows. And I was like, I want to do this. So I started making cakes at home. Not really good, but I eventually went to pastry school at the French Culinary Institute and graduated from there. And then I eventually worked my way up to being the lead cake decorator at a cake studio in Brooklyn. And now I'm the lead cake decorator at my job in Virginia. Tell me about the background going to school and stuff like that. How long is culinary school? What does that process look like? I did like the, it was like multiple days a week. So I got in and out of culinary school in nine months. Oh, wow. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, because it was like the, the fast route. You could take, you know, a lesser amount of classes and then like do a longer semester or whatever. It was so much jam-packed into the curriculum that it was like each week you're doing something new so Mm -hmm. yeah we would learn like knife techniques all this and then um it would be like breads one day we would learn um like petty fours another day we would learn some savory stuff and then like the last three months was like cake decorating and all that and that's like really what I wanted to do. So that was like my main focus. You mentioned you watch these different baking shows like Cake Boss and other Mm -hmm. shows. But when did you know that you wanted to pursue a career in this? Did you have a aha moment, as I call it? You were watching a show and you just knew that you absolutely had to enter the field. Honestly, I've just been doing art my entire life, not professionally or anything, but I've been an artist since I was so little and I used to like sculpt a lot of Play-Doh stuff. And honestly, when I started doing fondant work with cakes, it it involved a lot of sculpting and it was basically this like the same exact process. So that's when I was like, oh, like I am actually good at this. Like I can do this. And it's not like I was never really a a good painter or uh, wasn't like the best like traditional artist. So I just felt like this was something unique that I could do, um, that not many people were in the field at the time that I started. Like cake decorating was not as well known. The cake decorating scene wasn't very saturated. So I just wanted to jump in when it was fresh. You have created wrestling inspired cakes, including championship inspired cakes, but you also have numerous cakes that are non-wrestling related. What have been some of your favorite to create? My favorite cake to date that I've created was the Monday Night Raw 25th anniversary cake, but that's obviously wrestling related. But my favorite cakes to make are like super realistic cakes, food especially. Uh, I love making realistic looking food. I love making like cakes that look like purses or animals. Yeah, it's just so much fun to me. Let's talk a little bit about that raw cake. How long did it take you to construct that? To make the entire raw cake, I mean, from start to finish, it probably took like two weeks because I designed and created the cake entirely by myself because it was at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn and my my old job, the cake studio, was a few blocks away. So we did a lot of events at the Barclays and WWE said they wanted a cake. So my boss said, uh, Marge, nobody else knows anything about wrestling. So <laughs> Like, you take the reins on this. And I said, gladly. So this was like the first cake that I had the opportunity to actually design and create start to finish. Like I sketched it up. I stacked the cake, decorated the whole thing. But yeah, my favorite part was designing it because it's like, like other cakes, I didn't have to do much research. Right. It was like, I just took all my knowledge uh, from watching wrestling for my whole life and put it into the cake. Like I put all the different raw logos from over the years on the cake. I put 
like notable wrestlers and events pictures all over. Yeah, it was just, it was so much fun. Uh, it was such an honor and I ended up delivering and attending the event. So that was like the icing on the cake. <laughs> <laughs> What has been your most challenging cake to create? How long did it take and what did the process look like? Was it the raw cake or have you had one that's more difficult? The raw cake was easy to me in uh, <laughs> many ways. Like, obviously it was a lot of work because mm -hmm. it was like my baby. Yeah. It was my, yeah, my project and my project alone. But I have done like tons of 3D sculpted cakes, uh, usually like larger than life. I've done like a gigantic life-size couch. I've oh my done, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of X-rated cakes, which mm -hmm. are <laughs> really fun. Oh, and I've, I was on a Disney Plus competition show called Foodtastic, which was probably one of the most stressful things I've ever done. Uh, <laughs> So it wasn't entirely cake. It was like a giant Toy Story scene made out of like cake and different foods. It was super time consuming, super stressful. If you know T-Rex from Toy Story, I made him out of cake and like covered in broccoli, but he was my height. So <laughs> yeah, it was just a gigantic scale cake. And I'm not good under pressure. So the whole competition aspect of it was super difficult for me. I'm gonna have to tune into that. I like those shows, yeah. those cake <laughs> shows, the cooking shows. I'm usually mm -hmm. like really into those. I didn't know you were on yeah. that. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I love watching them, but being on <laughs> it is a different story. Right. I, like, <laughs> I had so much anxiety. I don't know if I would do a competition show ever again. You mentioned it a little bit earlier, but I have to ask, does your inner wrestling fan get excited when you're asked to create a wrestling inspired cake or you're creating it on your own? And also at the same time, do you get a lot of customers requesting those type of cakes? Oh, wrestling cakes are my favorite cakes to make, of course. Yeah, it's not like um, cakes where we do like, based off of kids shows which are super popular um where i have to like research the topic and like <laughs> look up all the stuff you know wrestling comes easy to me but unfortunately we don't have much of a market for wrestling cakes here i mean even when i was in new york it wasn't a popular order but we have had a few orders at my current job and even though they're few and far between like, you know i put my heart and soul into <laughs> those orders. And again, nobody likes wrestling at my current job either. So they're like, all right, Marge, you take this one. <laughs> and so we have gotten to do a, um, like a groom's cake that was shaped like the NXT oh. tag team title. Yeah, that was fun. Um, people still come up to me to this day randomly and they were like, oh, you made my friend's wrestling belt cake. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I've also done a birthday cake for someone that was a huge fan of Christian Cage randomly. This was before he was like, he came back. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> to well, he was wearing that turtleneck. <laughs> yeah. So this was, yeah, this was a while ago when he wasn't even on TV anymore. And they wanted, they just wanted Christian Cage themed cake. And I said, what if I make an edible Funko Pop version of him oh, on top of the cake? Oh, that's cute. Yeah. yeah. That was a little challenging because he doesn't have a Funko Pop. So I had to design that as well. <laughs> Sketch up the Funko Pop version of him and then actually sculpt it 3D. Did you send it to him when you were done? Like on Instagram or Twitter or anything? Oh, I've tagged him a bunch of times. Because okay. I'm like, yeah. that is super cool. Yeah. He has, has not acknowledged me <laughs> yet. <sighs> Unbelievable, Christian. Get on it. <laughs> right. Do you encounter a lot of wrestling fans, whether it's clients or staff? Have you ever encountered? You've mentioned that you are usually the only wrestling fan, but have you had any fellow employees that have been fans as well? No, unfortunately. <gasps> yeah, it's uh I don't think I've ever worked with anyone that was a wrestling fan. Wow. <laughs> I know. I have nobody to talk about at my job. Not many people in the cake decorating field, I feel, are wrestling fans. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why, I don't know if you've seen, I do um, a lot of like wrestling cake videos for yeah. fun. The, when the everything is cake craze took mm -hmm. off, that's when I was like, oh, everybody's doing like realistic food or, you know, stuff like that. And I was like, nobody's doing wrestling cakes. So that's what I was like, I need to corner this market and do like wrestling toys or video games and that's what I, I remember was. seeing your one of the ice cream that I think that was the first one I had seen where you were cutting it and I was like oh that's super cool yeah that was actually the first one I did the stone cold 
ice cream bar cake. <laughs> yeah, because everybody was recording these videos. I was like, I gotta jump on this. So I've only done wrestling related, like realistic cakes just for like my personal videos. Mm -hmm. Do you eat all the cakes when you're done? What do you do with them? Usually I give them away, honestly. Aww, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> and sometimes it's just like stale cake that mm -hmm. are, is about to be thrown out. And I'm like, I'm just gonna make a video with this. You know, why waste not want not. You have gained traction over a certain cake for years now, the Jake the Snake cake. When did you originally yeah. create this cake and how does it feel to see it come up every so often and gain attention? It's very weird because I think it's kind of obvious. It's one of the very first cakes I've ever made like in my career. I think that was even before I went to pastry school. So I had to have made it 13 years ago, 2010-ish. So I don't know how it got dug up because it only recently became a meme. Like somebody found the picture somehow. <laughs> like I don't, I like the last place I remember having it online was my Facebook in like an ancient album mm -hmm. so somebody dug it up made it a meme um and it just keeps getting reposted everywhere diamond dallas page posts it like every month for some reason <laughs> like it's funny i really love that people appreciate the cake that much but at the same time no one ever credits me and it's like no one knows that i'm the person who made this cake <laughs> Like, it's just gonna- This is her time. Keep... She's telling you all, she created that cake. Give her her props. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> my followers know that I right. made it. I'll never get my flowers for that cake. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Although it was funny that um, somebody ended up finding me after they ordered that cake from someone else, like, for their husband's birthday. Oh. They had it re- <laughs> They were like, I loved it so much. I had it recreated. And they're like, I can't believe I found you. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're like, I'm right here. You should have found me earlier. I would have made I it. <laughs> <laughs> Except 10 times better because I, I'd like to think I have improved since then. <laughs> <laughs> You've also gained traction for your awesome wrestling inspired cosplay looks, which include Mankind, The Fiend Bray Wyatt, Dan Housen, and many more. How long have you been cosplaying for? And what are some of your favorite looks that you've created? So I've been cosplaying for maybe 13, 14 years now, ever since I started attending New York Comic Con. But I didn't always do wrestling cosplay. I think I was, I started off doing like Pokemon cosplay, Street Fighter, stuff like that. And then I ended up doing a, uh, the Mankind cosplay because my, me and my best friend wanted to do, you know, matching cosplays. So, uh, we decided to go as I was mankind or womankind, whatever. And she went as Cactus Jackie. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so we were like those sexy versions of Mick Foley. <laughs> but we couldn't find a dude love, unfortunately. We didn't know oh, another. Yeah, a, we didn't no know another dude girl. Love. <laughs> no, we didn't know another girl that was into wrestling. That sucked. But yeah, we did that together. And then ever since then, I've been strictly doing wrestling cosplay i especially love doing like the you know the gender bending costumes where i take a wrestler like mick foley or the fiend um and then just turn them into like a like a sexy <laughs> female version i think it's just it's so funny taking like the super tough masculine guys and then yeah just making them like super feminine you mentioned you go to comic-con every year i went last year so in your years of going do you see a lot of wrestling fans attending i know when i went i did see a couple but i didn't see a lot and i think that was probably due to the fact that there wasn't a lot of wrestling participation there you had some people doing autograph signing stuff like that but there weren't any panels yeah that is true there's not like a big market for it there for some reason i do mm -hmm. see the same wrestlers every year doing autograph signings but yeah they don't do much based on wrestling for some reason which they probably should i feel like that would attract more wrestling fans they do a lot of wrestling at the local con here in richmond it's called galaxy con which mm -hmm. is really great they do like wrestling trivia with a ring and then they do like the cosplay wrestling federation i'm not sure if you've heard of it it's wrestlers they all wear 
cosplay while the wrestling and they get into the character uh who, of who they're dressed as <laughs> i feel like more of that stuff would do really well in new york comic con your years of going do you see like an increase of fans out of 10 has it decreased what does that look like as a fellow attendee oh i definitely see tons of wrestling fans even though there's not many wrestling events going on like mm -hmm. i see so much wrestling cosplay especially when I'm cosplaying myself as a wrestler, I always run into other wrestlers. We like stop and do a photo shoot and I'll, I'll like run into people dressed as the same thing as me. Like that happened with that <laughs> like happened the Spider-Man meme. You're like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, when I was dressed as um, the fiends, I ran into a bunch of other fiends. I dressed as Enzo with a big cast one year and there was like five other Enzos. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it was so weird. So yeah, tons of wrestling fans. Do you hear her in New York Comic Con? You have to cater to the wrestling fan. <laughs> <laughs> are you going You're... this year though? I am not going this year, but I know you are going this year. Yeah. What is your look going to be? What is what is drawing your inspiration this year? So I am doing uh, EO Sky this year. It's probably been my most difficult one to date because I've had to do like so much sewing. You know, her outfits are like super intricate, mm -hmm. like so many random straps and rhinestones and like furry material so it's been really challenging working with uh, all these materials that I've never touched before so when you are about to go to New York Comic Con how far in advance do you think of your cosplay and how do you decide who you'd like to cosplay for that year is it something that you kind of think about throughout the year or is it something you kind of think about a couple months beforehand it's something that I think about throughout the year because I don't work well under pressure. So I, if I have to do like make a whole costume from scratch, I don't like to leave it to the last minute mm -hmm. and I'll start it like months in advance just so I can work at it like on my own pace. But usually I just, I do like to do a lot of like nostalgic costumes, like with the mankind and sting, but sometimes I like to stay relevant which is why I'm doing EO this year. She's the current champion, so why not? And yeah, the year that I was the fiend, you know, he he was super popular. So I decided to jump on that and that I had I made like the whole mask from scratch cuz WWE shop had one, but it was like trash. So so yeah, I was really proud of that one too. Along with being a cake decorator, a cosplayer, you also make wrestling inspired merch, including pins and illustrations. When did this journey begin for you and what have been some of your favorite pieces to create? I started making pins in maybe like seven years ago. Back then, there wasn't really a wrestling pin market yet. It was very small. Yeah, it was very early on, like pins had just started like picking up steam and there was maybe me and like a handful of other people that made wrestling inspired pins. Um, it was such a small community that we had like a small group chat on Instagram, like Aww. just to, <laughs> yeah, to like talk about our ideas and to make sure that like we, what if we came up with an idea, someone wasn't already, you know, in the process of making it. So we mm -hmm. were all super chill. And at that time, uh, there were definitely no women wrestling merch makers. And I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was like the only female wrestling pin maker at the time. So I just felt like I, I felt like an obligation to really focus on female wrestlers and to make merch of them. And that was when I made the um, bloody Becky Lynch pin. Not sure if you saw that, but yeah, that was like, I had to jump on that right after that occurred on, was it SmackDown? Or I think it was during Survivor Series, like around that time. I think she had on the blue shirt, didn't she? Yeah, she yeah. was on Team SmackDown. Yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, I, I was like, I gotta, I gotta capture this moment. And that's really what skyrocketed my pin career. I'd say, yeah, it just really blew up after that. And yeah, that was probably my most popular pin, I'd say. Another favorite pin I've made was the um, Mick Foley and Vader set of pins. Oh, mm -hmm. It was, yeah, it was like Mick Foley with the hanging ear and then Vader with the hanging eye. Those pins like sold really well too. They were super popular. Where do you draw inspiration from when you're creating pins? 
So you mentioned the Becky Lynch pin. You saw it on TV. But some of these older superstars like Mick Foley, I know you've had. Um, I'm thinking of the little newspaper one with the local man. That mm-hmm. one. Where do you draw that type of inspiration from? I try to come up with ideas that haven't already been done. Mm-hmm. You know, if like there's something that's already been covered by different artists, even if it's drawn differently, I don't want to step on any toes. So I'll try to come up with brand new ideas. Usually you try to stay relevant to what's happening currently in wrestling, but you know, the pin manufacturing process it takes such a long time usually like up to a month so it's like you gotta work fast or by the time you get the pins it's not gonna be relevant anymore Mm -hmm. (laughs) you have showcased and sold your art at numerous wrestling conventions do you have any upcoming appearances where wrestling fans can come see and purchase your awesome pieces Yeah, I'm actually going to be at WrestleCade for the first time. Uh, It's November 24th to 26th in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Every year, people ask me if I'm going to be there. I'm like, uh, like, you know, I work a full-time job. Unfortunately, art, like wrestling art is not my full-time job. I wish it was. But, you know, it's hard to take off and fly out or drive out for events like this. But I finally decided to bite the bullet. And yeah, I'm finally going to vend there. So I'm super excited. Don't know what to expect, but I think it'll be a good experience. And uh, I'm going to have a lot of exclusive merch for the event, like pins that have been discontinued or sold out for years. I'm going to bring them back just for this. You guys have to go if you're in the area. I would definitely go if I was on that side of the world. Let's talk Sketchamania. For those not familiar with this, can you explain what the challenge is and how it began? So Sketchamania, it is based off of the yearly drawing challenge called Inktober, which happens every October. It's like usually Halloween based. But originally Sketchmania didn't actually start like a a version of Inktober. I actually started it uh, at the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. You know, it was like when March hit, people were unemployed, um, quarantined, including myself. So uh, it was like, we everyone was going stir crazy. Everyone needed something to keep themselves occupied. So uh, in April, I just decided to come up with this challenge and it was WrestleMania month too. So I thought it was really good timing. And yeah, it was, it just took off because everybody else was in the same boat and yeah, they just really needed something to keep them occupied. So it, it, like tons of people participated the first time I did it. Then I decided to just, you know, move it to October, just like Inktober, because everybody's back to work. So just keep it during Halloween, keep it spooky. It's like Inktober where it's like every day of the month, you get a word prompt and then you draw something based off of that prompt. You could use whatever medium you want. People aren't obligated to do it every single day. And everybody just comes up with their own interpretations of the word, which is the most fun of it. It's like, if you go under the hashtag, it's just like you see everybody taking the same word, but like doing a completely different drawing. Approximately how many people participate per year? Do you keep track? Um, I don't. I do tend to keep track of how many posts there are under the hashtag. Mm -hmm. So honestly, it's lost a little steam ever since, you know, the first one during the pandemic, which is understandable. I'd say it's probably like a few dozen people Mm -hmm. that participate. And do you notice it's some of the same people that have been doing it for the past couple years, or do you see a lot of new faces? Oh, it's usually the same people, like with a few new faces mixed in, but it's great because it's always the same people coming back asking me even before October hits, they, they ask me like, Oh, are you doing it this year? And they're like, yeah. Uh, have you already come up with the list? Can I get a peek? And I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> if you want a head start, you can get a head start. It's fine. Looking into the future, are there any new wrestling cakes oh. or merchandise on your radar? Or do you have any that you'd like to create? Yeah. So unfortunately, I don't know if you know, but my Instagram got, deleted by the man recently. So uh, I had a lot of projects in the works that I had to scrap because now I have to tread a lot more carefully when it comes to the subjects that I use Mm -hmm. in my art. So I've kind of had to redirect like the type of merchandise I'm making. So um, just trying to come up with a lot more original material. I started doing Lady of Guadalupe statues and mm-hmm. painting them but with all lucha masks on i am 
planning on recording more cake videos for sure. I have some wrestling video game and wrestling toy related cakes coming soon. <laughs> cake cutting videos and everything. Yeah, making a lot of stuff for Wrestlecade. Uh, like I said, pins. Oh, I have these pins actually coming for Wrestlecade. These are some of the Oh, some of the exclusive ones that I have come in. Yes. So I'll have those tote bags. Oh, mm -hmm. I'll have a ton of those there. Wrestling Christmas cards coming up. I do those every year. So uh, it's almost the season. So I also have those at WrestleCave. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marge, for joining me here on Wrestling Wind Down. Where can the people keep up with you on social media? I am at marge.jpg, which is M A R J D O T. JPG. That's my Instagram, my Twitter or X. Um, and I'm also marge.jpg.com spelled the same way. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Wrestling Wind Down. You can find all of our other episodes available wherever you listen to your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. We are on Twitter and Instagram at WWDCAST. We also have our official merch store, which you can find at shop.wrestlingwindownlv.com. Let us know what you thought about this episode. What was your favorite part? Until next time, Time, enjoy your wine and of course enjoy your wrestling cheers, cheers.